To put a radio collar onto an elephant is hard work. It requires a large and committed team. Wildlife monitors are briefed well in advance to make sure that on the day of the collaring operation, scientists can find a suitable subject. The wildlife monitors have spent months tracking elephants in the valley. As well as following footprints, trails and smells, they've helped form an important relationship with the local farmers, keen to help by watching out for elephants. All of the communities in the valley are involved. The sum of the information gathered by the different groups of monitors is reported back to Guy, the project leader. So, you followed spores south along the Smeagol? With this information, he tries to predict where we might find some elephants today. How many elephants? His predictions are passed on to an aeroplane crew who will be able to quickly confirm these guesses from the air. It's not British Airways, but it does fly. Incidentally, the plane will also check on the looming bushfires that may threaten the farms down here. The plane is useful for helping find groups of elephants in the dense vegetation and also to keep the collaring team safe from elephants invisible at ground level. The plane has spotted the elephants and the ground crew move off. The journey might take hours across this vast and sweltering landscape. We go through farms and villages. A nice straight road makes for a smooth journey. But as the agricultural settlements end, so does our luck. These roads were built for the sole purpose of disseminating pesticides which control tsetse flies, which cause sleeping sickness in humans and livestock. As the flies disappeared, so did the need for the roads, and they must be cleared for these vehicles. Hopefully they will all get a ride back. The plane tells us that we're near the group of elephants. The cars are then abandoned. We try to sight the animals from the ground. At last we see some elephants for ourselves, and the business of collaring one of them can begin. The tranquilizer is loaded into a dart. This is M99, suitable for elephants, and the effects of which can be reversed with another drug, giving the vet control over how long the elephant is unconscious for. We're now going to move closer and split into two teams. Team one will consist of the vet, an armed safety expert, and a researcher with essential equipment. Team two will carry the collaring equipment and stays in the background until the elephant is asleep. On this occasion, team one also has a member of the local council and a cameraman. I mentioned earlier about elephants that are invisible from the ground. I knew you wouldn't believe me, but as well as being big and beautiful, these very dangerous animals are masters of disguise. The vet needs a good clear shot. The sound of the dart gun will alert all of the elephants to the presence of their worst enemy, and the whole day could be wasted. The plane has spotted a large group of elephants at a bend in a dry riverbed. This could be the one. The vet carefully loads the dart into his gun. Oh yeah, it's all high tech. And we rush to a raised bank. The elephants charge around the corner of the bend, panicking because of the plane and heading straight for us. Though we're all nervous, our position means we're safe, 
and the experienced vet takes aim and fires. The reaction of the target elephant and the sound of the dart force the elephants to run off. We sit and wait and hope. The plane has followed the herd and sees that one of them has fallen over in a field. Team two are now called in and we find the sleeping giant on his side. The plane circles overhead, ready to warn us if the other elephants return. The team moves swiftly. While the collar is being fitted, statistics of the elephant will be noted, including its height, its length, and its shoe size. The collar is fed under the elephant's neck with ropes and is secured with weights on its underside. These will ensure the radio transmitter sits on top of the elephant's neck where it gives its best signal and is less prone to damage. A tissue sample is taken from the trunk and will be sent to scientists at the University of Zimbabwe who are studying an epidemic of paralyzing trunk disease. <laughs> Finally, and most importantly, the radio transmitter is tested. And all this while the elephant sleeps soundly. Okay, uh, I think back to where we came from, eh? Safely across the other side. We are hurried off by the vet as he administers the reverser drug. The reverser drug will take effect in under 10 minutes. The waking giant will be confused and frightened, not to forget angry. The whole team will treat the safety of the airstrip while the plane monitors the elephant for some time. Following has been successful, and the pilot tells us that the elephant has found his original herd. Big and beautiful, dangerous masters of disguise. Where are they, and where are they going? <laughs>